Okay. So I'm I'm going to sort of do a little bit with my going around the house and then I'm going to sit down for a bit because that still needs to be charging. Oh, have you seen my look at that? Look at that my garden here. It's a little bit uh, scary and overgrown. Um yes, we put moth traps up yesterday and and there's a, we looked up and um on the National Trust they gave um free moth traps last year. This is this year, so we didn't get them for free, but my flatmate got them and we put them up. Not sure that we had a moth problem anymore. We used to have a moth problem. We'd seen a few around, wasn't sure. Anyway, put a few up, one in the back. The National Trust says on average, after three months after collecting it in the south of England, in London, there were 23 moths, they call after three months of having one of these traps on. We put a trap in this room, this room here, and then there's 24 moths a day later it's not it's a bit it's a moth 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 apocalypse moth moth apocalypse a moth apocalypse anyway that's so that's exciting isn't it it's scary uh, moths i've got a, a bit of a thing about moths i'm not sure um they 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 also, somebody said it was cruel to kill them. Yes, it probably is. The thing is, is it cruel to kill, kill fleas? It probably is. It's cruel to kill a lot of things. I don't kill most, I was going to say monsters, insects. I, I, I let most insects live. I put a big giant, I put that big giant six-legged spider. Oh, did I say about six legged? I had a six-legged spider last week. It was huge. I'd put pictures up, but I didn't put them, I didn't mention it here. Anyway, I let that out, six legs. It... It was surprisingly crawly for a six-legged spider. And, uh, yeah, I do care for life and stuff. But the thing is with the moths, they have tormented me for a number of years. They've eaten carpets. They've eaten clothes. They've eaten curtains. They've eaten a lot of things. And so, and also, they cause skin irritation. And they're just annoying. So... I'm sort of semi-vegetarian, but I don't eat moths, so that's all right. I just... So, you know, uh, some people have had other solutions for getting rid of moths, humanely. Things like cedar, which is great, but cedar costs money, obviously, and and this is quicker. So hopefully this will get rid of the moth problem once and for all. But, you know, while I'm here, I, I was just looking and I found a um, monopoly. Really exciting Monopoly I found. It was um it wasn't just normal Monopoly, it was it was Justice League American Monopoly. I I, I was just looking around to see whether the moths had been caught and I saw some um I just saw some odd Superman um money and I thought, oh I had Justice Hello, hello, I had Justice League Monopoly, didn't I? Wonder what happened to that. And then I sort it out. Justice League Monopoly. That's backwards, isn't it? I don't know why this is backwards. I tried to I tried to go live on my phone and it didn't go it didn't work. I don't know whether my phone would be any better. So I'm coming in here. What's the lighting like in here? Not great. So hello. So I'm gonna turn some lighting on so so it'll be bright. Whoa. And then so ah bright. So I'm gonna sit down now. That was all you see in my house because now I have to plug in so that I can carry on, so that I don't run, ooh, that was, that was harsh lighting, so that I don't run out, excuse me a minute, hello, how are you, just see the top of my head, so I don't run out of power, so, let there be light, and there was light, so Justice League Monopoly is very exciting, it's all going to be backwards, but we've got uh, Superman, backwards Superman, 10, 10 Monopoly Leagues, Bank of Metropolis, and uh, look, this is all completely backwards, but imagine if it was forwards. Hooray. And but there's things that you can see that aren't going to be backwards. Like, what's this? Oh, I thought, is there no villains? There is villains. Look at that. No, that's not a villain. That's a... Uh, oh, no, that's the Martian Manhunter. Not a villain at all. I thought it was uh, Lex Luthor. It's very difficult to tell when it's that tiny. Not Lex Luthor. He's the Martian Manhunter. Yeah. And then I've got... Oh, Superman. Good old Superman there, lovely Superman, yeah. Who else? Guess, can you guess who else is in the box? Who else is in the Justice League that I might have the Monopoly pieces for? Ooh, 
who could I have? That wasn't Superman, was it? Was it Superman? Did I just show you Superman? Was it? Su anyway, there's Superman. Obviously, he's obviously. It was Superman. Who else? Uh, who's in the Justice League? Can anyone guess? That's right, Batman. Nobody guessed. That there you are, Batman. Da 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 da. Batman. D. Batman. 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 Who else? Uh, who's this? Green Arrow. Doesn't look very impressive. Green Arrow. He's old school Green Arrow, not like the one in Arrow. Oliver Queen. What a name. Oliver Queen. Who else is in the Justice League? It's not many women in the Justice League. Who? Who could it be? It's Wonder Woman. Wee. La 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 la. They've got no bodies. They've just got bust. It's a bust. Bust of Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's bust. And also, Flash! Ah, uh, not that Flash. Oh, if you go like that, they look like there's a whole one. And then you go, oh, no, he's just a torso. And then, who else? Oh yeah, Aquaman. Aquaman, Aquaman, does whatever a back will can. Springs a best. That's not Aquaman, is it? <laughs> yeah, and they've got little houses and hotels. That's a hotel. And little houses. Wee, 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 all the way home. So that's exciting, isn't it? Justice League Monopoly. Yeah, I've only played it like four times. And it was really exciting. I remember that I had some... Yes, it is. It's amazing. So we played it about four times with some friends that were big Smallville fans and all that stuff. And it was great. But I had a flatmate who never came out of her room. She came out and she saw me playing Justice League Monopoly. We're like, do you want to join us? And she was like, no, I'm all right. And she was never seen again. True story. She was living there for like three or four months afterwards. And she moved out without us even noticing. And... She just so didn't like the fact that I was playing Justice League Monopoly. This is all I can think of. That she just never, ever came out of her room ever again. So that's how popular Justice League Monopoly is. And I've never played it again either. Because if it just causes poor people to not even come out of their room anymore, it's probably not really worth it. But, you know, that was... That was fun. Uh, yeah, I had lots of flatmates at that place. And they came and went... I had an American that uh, Sonny announced at the beginning of one week that she was going to leave at the end of the week. So we got very, very drunk on very nice vodka. And then I thought, oh, hang on a minute. After we drunk quite a lot of very nice vodka, I've got work in the morning. I'm supposed to be on a game show. So I had to go all the way to Norfolk, I think it was, to be on this game show. And Ellie, I don't know. I've never been called Ellie. Some people call me Elle. I mean, the, not Ellie. I don't know, I did actually. One of the people that used to play Justice League Monopoly with me, the twice, she's, he used to call me Ellie, but he's probably the only person in my life that has called me Ellie. Not really my name. But, you know, it's better than Elsie, which I get an awful lot more. And that's not my name. Not my name. Not my name. So, yes. Weird. People are talking next door. They can hear me. And they're going, weird. It's very thin walls here. Just just go in another room is all I can say. Yeah, can't help it. Anyway. So <laughs> can you hear them? Yeah, so, you know, am I speaking loudly? I probably am. I'll just speak quieter. If I speak quieter, then they won't hear me next door. And then they won't say I'm weird. They might say I'm weird. Can you hear me when I'm whispering? Nobody's answering. I just turned on super chat. I didn't know I could do that. I think it's because I'm so close, so close to being a partner again that they let me have super chat. But I, I don't really see the point. I think super chat, you can pay to have your comment highlighted. And I can't see anyone actually doing that, but I turned it on anyway, just in case anyone wants to, for some reason, pay to have their comment highlighted. It might happen. So, yeah, so I'm very, very, very close to being a partner, but not so close that I am actually. Although it says super, I don't know, it makes it super that I get a, I get a penny for it or something. 
<laughs> yeah, I asked about this ages ago when I was a partner and I never used it then. But I went to a, a YouTube um, thing at the YouTube headquarters and said, well, what's the use of that? And, ooh, and if it's a, a rude comment, they'll take it off and block you, right? So I said, do you still get the money if it's a rude comment? And they said no. And I was like, because I think, you know, if somebody says something horrible and you still get the money and they get blocked and banned anyway, I think that's a plus for you. But that doesn't happen, apparently. You don't get the money. So, so I'm not sure. So Super Chat is super, like Justice League is super, in that it's not very super. It's, it's just about super enough. But it's there. So, so, so close. I'm like... 20,000 views from being a proper partner again and now they've brought in this other thing where you've got YouTube premium and I don't really know how that's going to affect people that were going to be partners anyway it might make it all harder or easier I don't know <sighs> who can tell so I was thinking what to do really about financing and stuff I was thinking about Patreon I've got Patreon, but nobody really... There's like three, four people that are very supportive on Patreon, and that's it. Because I don't really know how it works. I'm like... And I don't really know. But I thought, maybe if I have super secret, like, chapters from one of my novels or something, then nobody's going to really be into that. Are they? But they might be. If I, like, post up chapters as I, I'm writing them, and super secret, and only if you're supporting me on Patreon can you read them, that work or would you actually need something better than that I don't know because I don't know how it works oh you can see this I've got lots of patterns on my on my jumper now this is because my mum bought it it might be cool I don't know I could do that but I mean I might start reading my I might start reading my novels and then everyone's like oh no I've changed my mind anyway this pattern because the moths that I showed you at the beginning, if if you've come here late, which everyone did, I showed the moths that were <sighs> trapped in the trap. Most of the, my clothes have been killed by the moths. I've got holes in everything. My mother's pointed out a couple of times, oh, you've got a hole in that jumper, did you know? It's like, yes, the moths ate it. So she sent me a lovely jumper. I don't usually wear patterns and it's 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 like, I'm, I feel uncomfortable with patterns. I know what it is. A pattern that makes me go... Ooh, I like plain clothes. Plain clothes. Plain clothes, policemen. No, I'm not a policeman. So, but this has got, like, is it snowflakes or... I don't know what it is. It's weird, anyway. Weird. Also a fancy. don't like fancy things. Plain. That's what I like. Plain. All the things and plain. So, yeah, it might be quite cool if I do chapters from my novel. Or it might not be cool if it actually happens. But, you know, it's an option. So I've got to think of things for the future and, and videos. Like I said in the last time, I might do a one person Macbeth. And I said I might do it at Edinburgh. And I'm like, I probably won't do it at Edinburgh, to be honest. But I might do a video of it if there's a if there's a, a cry for it, if everyone wants me to do that. Nobody does. But they might do. It's difficult to know, isn't it? It's difficult to know. It's like my housemate said, well, the trouble with you, Elise, is you're not producing the sort of video that people want to watch. It's like... Thanks for that. But I try. I don't know what people want to watch. But I mean, I did see, I did um, binge watch the whole of um, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared yesterday. I'd already seen one of them. I saw all of them because I'd sort of avoided it because I was like, I'm so jealous. They got so many views. How did they do that? And I think they've done it largely through being quite entertaining and got very high production values. And it's a bit odd. And I was like, oh, I'd like to do that sort of thing. But I haven't got the money for it. Sorry, they're shouting again next door. They're very loud next door. And the thing is, maybe they're not really loud. It's just that the walls are very thin. I can't help that, though. They keep setting fire to the garden, though. I went out there, you know, I, a couple of weeks ago. There was a big fire in the garden. There was another one. I don't know what they're shouting about. They're always shouting. They're shouting all the time. They're very shouty people. Anyway, hello, hello, the green machine. They just shout and shout and shout, and then they just keep shouting. And they set fire to the garden. So, yes, what was I saying? Oh, another thing that I saw today so that was recommended was Hannah Gadsby on Netflix. And I hadn't really, hello, I've seen um, Please Like Me, and she's in that. 
that's really the only, she's not the main person in that, that's really the only experience I've had of Hannah Gatsby. So I started watching this, and I'm not, I used to really like stand-up comedy ages ago, and then I got into it, and I, and I started doing it, and I was like, I'm not sure I like it anymore. But yeah, I, I, I thought I'll watch this stand-up special, and it was like, yeah, 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 and then it got really good. Because it stopped being stand-up comedy, basically. She's like, I don't want to do stand-up comedy anymore. Um, and then she did, yeah. I still like stand-up comedy, but I don't know. I'm a bit jaded. Well, I'm going back to do... I've sort of had a bit of a break. And I'm going to do some more at the end. New direction. Which is why this Hannah Gadsby thing was quite interesting. Because she sort of turned it on its head. She was like, I don't do comedy anymore. And this. And then she, she just went off on one. And it was like, wow, this is really entertaining. Because the thing is, one of my one-person shows, as I've mentioned on numerous occasions, got a review from a well-known publication, online publication, saying this is just this is just talking. This isn't this isn't comedy. This is just stand talking. But then, this Hannah Gadsby thing, this was just stand up talking, and she was very angry. But um. I wasn't angry in mine, that was the difference. I think I had something to say, and I think it was funny. And I think that he was wrong that it wasn't comedy. But who am I to say? I'm not a professional critic, I'm just a comedian. So who am I to say what was right? Just a professional qu qu critic, I can't even say it. It's just, exactly, yeah, exactly, once you know how it's made. And also, you get a bit jaded because you see the best of you. You see all the other people getting on the TV and then you're like, oh, I can't afford to, to go to the gigs because sometimes you have to do a lot of gigs that don't pay you very well and only just pay you enough for you to get there. And without a car, it's quite hard. So I think if you've got, this is a secret to stand up comedy. This is what people don't understand. Have you got a car? Yes. Can you drive all the other comedians for 500 miles for petrol money and you can have a gig as well? Yes. Well then, you are a stand-up comedian. If not, sod you. You can't have a gig here. And it also helps, obviously, if you're a straight white male. I'm being a little bit facetious there. But am I? No, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, arguments at the moment about things like that, isn't there? A lot of arguments. But you know, I'm I'm sort of um, I'm sort of the sort of comedian that that doesn't go well with um. The, the sort of, uh, I'll, I'll name it, Chortle, that's what it was called. That was the name of the uh, the well-known publication that nobody outside comedy actually knows what it is. I mean, the guy that runs it is a really nice guy. I've, I've socialised with him and he's lovely. He just didn't like me. <laughs> he doesn't like me as a comedian and there's nothing you can do. And he doesn't like a lot of people as a comedian. And, and their comedy reviews quite early in their careers just haunt them for the rest of their life. I went out with a, uh, a comedian who had a really bad review on Chortle and everyone kept bringing it up. And I was, I brought it up. I was like, are you still over that bad review on Chortle? He's like, I've given up comedy. I've given up comedy now. I've given up comedy because, be, largely because of Chortle. So, so that's good. Oh, critics don't know what they do. They probably do know what they do. It's probably deliberate, isn't it? So, yeah, so uh, the point being, I am going to go back to comedy quite soon, but I've had a very extensive break. I'm like, oh, what's the point? Yeah, I was like quite happy the other day. I was like, la 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 la, it'll all be over soon. And my flatmate said, that sounds like you're like, it's the end of life. It's like, I'm like, yes, it'll all be over soon. Nothing matters anymore. Nothing matters anymore. So that's quite nice, isn't it? And then I had, oh, did I, have I done a video about this? I had a, a, um, a night terror sort of um, sleep paralysis thing the other night, which was exciting. Not exciting. I don't know if anyone else gets sleep paralysis, but it's horrible. It's terrifying. And knowing what it is doesn't help. Because I know what it is. I know you've got a hypnagogic state between sleep and, and wake and your body's paralysed. But you can, you can still, you know, and you open your eyes and you're like, ah. So it felt like I'd had a bit of a sort of light dream about going to see some sort of secret cinema with my mum and some people. And it was nice. And then I sort of half must have woken up and it felt like someone was clambering over me. And I was like, 
And in my dream, half dream, I was like, oh, hello, mum. Why are you getting into bed with me, mum? And then I was like, what are you talking about? You're in your house and your mother's like 400 miles away. And why would she do that anyway? And it felt like something had tightened on me. And like my, the, and it was like crawled over me. And it like the, the, the bed clothes like tightened on me. And I was like, oh, I know this is sleep paralysis, but it's awful. And I opened my eyes and I looked and I was like, ah. And then it felt like it went into me like a sort of possession. And I went, leave this place. And don't come back and and then i was like but obviously i thought i'd said it but i went <laughs> and then it sort of i was just oh, i'm awake and i got up and i wandered around a bit and i was like oh that was weird so i was possessed i wasn't possessed it was sleep paralysis and everyone's like and then i i was up in the way and i was i typed about it on facebook and everyone's like oh it's just it's just a dream. I'm like, I know it's just a dream. They're like, oh, it happens when you're overtired. It's like, I know it does. It's happened to me before, but this is the most terrifying one. This was the first one, the first real one that I acknowledged. I, I, I thought my dead cat had come to visit me and it was basically the same, except I could hear the purring and the scratching. But it was a bit like that. Only it felt like I, it was just horrible. Anyway, so I don't recommend that experience. If you're planning to have sleep paralysis, then why don't have it, really? Um, but I had been quite tired because I hadn't really gone to sleep till about two o'clock in the morning for some reason for the last few days before that. So that's exciting things that are happening, isn't it? Horrible feeling like you're being possessed and uh, moths everywhere and stuff like that. How exciting. Hello! Oh, hello Andy Calloway. Sleep paralysis. Yes, it is horrible and yeah, it would, it would and you can't do anything when you're paralysed when you're sleeping. You're just like, because I really did open my eyes and I was just like, I know I'm awake and I'd left the light on as well. I've got a light that's a red light because I'd heard that, that I went to um Ideal Home Exhibition a few years ago and they had this like completely made up thing where they reckon that if you have red LED lights then it's supposed to help with anti-aging and if you've got green LED lights it's supposed to help with pigmentation and if you've got blue LED lights then it, it gets rid of bacteria and it was rubbish and I thought hmm I don't really want to pay 150 quid for this but I'll look into it I know what I'll do I'll get a pound fifty LED changey calorie light and I'll put it in my lamp and then so I've got a little remote control and you can change colour you can go red light and you can have all the lights and, and just change it and it really doesn't help but also because you know you're not supposed to have blue light at night when you go to sleep so basically I had a red light on in my in my room when I had the sleep paralysis it turns out when you wake up and there's a red light on it's more terrifying than if it's in completely in the dark and usually I've got like a sleep mask on because I've had sleep paralysis before and also the hypnagogia and you've seen like it's I, I think they say that alien abduction and things like that are basically this thing hypnagogia and you just see these images and you're like ah, this is so scary I've seen a ghost I've seen an alien I've seen a monster there's monsters everywhere so in order to combat that and also because of the, the whole you don't want the light in your eyes and there's a lot of light outside because there's a like a big lamp um street light outside my house so it's always light in the middle of the night it's always light so usually i've got a sleep mask on but i didn't have that on so i just just like ah, terrified so yeah i had to relive all that so i would it you no it wouldn't be worse not to see the demon because if you can't see anything you you and you're sort of half awake and half you're like i can't see anything there's nothing i can see my eyes aren't because you're actually seeing things like but your eyes are awake and you you realize that your eyes are open but if your eyes are open and you've got a sleep mask on you can't see anything so you're like well that's okay then i can't see anything it's much better because you can't see anything because this your eyes are open or well, they are but they're blindfolded so it's much better it is much better but I didn't have that on I just had a red light yes maybe that's what it was I had actually been possessed by an alien yeah they came for the red lights and they're like yeah I know we're in there or maybe 
it was one of the moths. The moth people knew that in two days after that I was going to put up a moth trap and they thought, well, we get her before that. But it didn't work. Yes, the aliens were hunting the moths. They knew I had a problem. They were being helpful. They just didn't know how to communicate properly. Because there's also a lot of buzzing in this house. So it's like, ah, oh, so loud. Buzzy, buzzy, buzz, 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 buzz. It's a horrible, horrible house. Very noisy neighbours and buzzing. And they've got this sort of water tank that makes such a loud noise in the middle of the night in the day. It's so loud. I don't know. It must be unbearable next door because it's unbearable here. Whew. I've exhausted myself talking about this now. Gosh. Ooh. So I'll, get, I'll give it another four minutes and then it'll be my time done. That's good to hear. <laughs> Aliens always head for the blood. Yes, well done, yes. Yeah, so I had a red light on and they came to see me with my red light. Yeah. Oh, that was sexy, wasn't it? <laughs> so what's everyone been up to? Exciting things? Cookies and milk. Hmm. I could do that, yes. It's, it sounds really alien. I'm not waiting for Paul Duck because I don't watch Paul Duck, but I'm aware that maybe I'm thinking, does my audience watch Paul Duck? Is there a crossover between my audience and the Paul Duck audience? And seeing as I only have four people ever come to see me, the answer is probably no. But my mother watches Paul Duck, and so you know. She might come and join me, but she hasn't. She hasn't. She hasn't. She doesn't know about it because it was a bit sort of on the fly. On the fly or on the moth. Chest hair. Does Paul Duck have a lot of chest hair? He looks like he might do. He looks like a very hairy man. For I am a smooth man and you are a hairy man. The Bible and it's also an Alan Bennett sketch about... Esau and Jacob. Yes, I know things. They're talking again. They're talking again next door. They can hear me. Bored, yes, bored, la, la. Luke Cage. Yes, I didn't watch. I didn't really get on with Luke Cage. I preferred Jessica Jones, to be honest. Hmm. Being human. Who was in Big Being Human? Oh, was he? Oh, I see. Being human. I got confused with human and being human. Yes, he was in being human and he was also in something else, wasn't he? Was he in something else? I'm getting him confused with something else. Yeah, he was in being human and then he left being human and they had a whole different cast of being human. I actually preferred the second cast of being human, except for the ghost who I liked better. I liked the first ghost better and I liked the second werewolf better and I liked the second vampire better. So... They should have stuck with the first ghost, not the first, the original, because um, Andrea, what's her name, was the ghost in the pilot, wasn't she? Not her, didn't like her as the ghost, the ghost in the first series. She was a good ghost, she was in something else recently, what was she in? Oh, Sense8, was she in Sense8? No, is that somebody else? No, that's not, she, that was, I'm getting very confused, no, who's in, who's in Sense8? Martha Jones from Doctor Who's in Sense8, what's the other one in? The other person that's in the thing. There's too many people. Uh, see, because I was getting Agent Gillen mixed up with the guy from Queer as Folk, who's Agent something else. And then there's the other person who was in an episode of Doctor Who. Was he in an episode of Doctor Who? I'm getting very confused. I don't know who anyone is anymore. There's too many people. There's too many actors, and yet all the same actors do the same thing. Alright, so I'll let you get on with Pole Dark then, shall I? Go and watch Aidan Gillen taking his shirts off and, and putting his hairy chest in people's faces. I don't know what they, he does in Pole Dark, to be honest. Has he got a pole and is it dark? Russell Tovey. Yes, that's him. I, th I got confused with him. L-O-T-R. Lord of the Rings. Yes, he was. He was, he was, he was Killy or Gilly or, or Willy or... Millie or Billy. Philly. I get there eventually. You keep putting them. Philly. He was Philly. He was Philly the dwarf. I used to know all the dwarfs names. Philly, Killy, Gollum, Wollum, Dollum, Solemn. That's them. Yay. 
He was Billy. Not Kitty. Russell, yes, I thought Russell Tubby was in Doctor Who. I thought he was. That's why I was like, hang on, was he though? I know he was in something. But I can't remember what. Ah, anyway, yes, go and watch your dark pole with your pole dark. That really doesn't sound right, does it? Ah, too many dwarfs, too many dwarfs, too many dwarfs. There were too many dwarfs to keep track of. But I did, as I said, at the time, know all the dwarfs' names. What are they called? Killy, Philly. I can't remember any of them. That's terrible, isn't it? My mind has gone. Completely gone. I'm, I'm sure there's more important information in the world. And on that note, on that bombshell, I will go and leave you to the pole dark. Bye bye. Join me soon. Killy filly, oin gloin, moin boin, boin foin. Yeah, that's them. Good one. Bye bye.